Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over an explanation for resistance and resistivity. I have made previous videos for some example problems for resistance and resistivity, and I also made some videos for electric current and for Ohm's law. You can link to those videos in the upper right-hand corner of this video. And please don't forget, before we go on, to subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos, and leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. Help me reach my goal of 100,000 subscribers. Okay, here we go, resistance and resistivity. Here we have four different conductors, four wires, A, B, C, and D. They're all made of the same material, they're all at the same temperature, and they all have a current flowing through them. And I think this is a good kind of a qualitative way to think about resistance. We would like to know which wire, A, B, C, or D, offers the greatest resistance to the flow of charge, and which one would offer the least resistance or the lowest resistance to the flow of charge otherwise known as the current. Now, you can kind of think about this in terms of which one would be hardest for you or which one would take the longest amount of time for you to get through. Well, you should notice that A has the lower diameter and the greater length. So that one would be the hardest one for you to get to, and that is because it would offer the greatest resistance. And that means it would have the lowest current. Now, you'll notice D has the greater diameter and the shorter length, so that means that it would have the lowest resistance and would be the easiest for you to get through and therefore would have the highest current. Now you'll notice B and C. You'll notice C is twice as long as B, but also C has twice the diameter of B. So those two would have the same. It'd be somewhere between A and D, and they would have the same current flowing through them. Okay? So now let's see if we can quantify this a little bit more. You should notice now that the resistance is really related to the length. And I've been saying the diameter, but what it really is, it's the cross-sectional area. And that means that as the length of the wire increases, then the resistance also increases. And as the length of the wire decreases, then the resistance also decreases. And that means that those two values, the length and the resistance, are directly proportional to each other, and we can write that down as R is directly proportional to L. Now, what about the cross-sectional area? Well, as you should notice, that as the area increases, then the resistance is going to decrease. As the wire gets bigger and bigger, it's easier for the current to flow through, so as the area increases, the resistance decreases. And as the area decreases, the wire gets smaller and smaller, then the resistance is going to increase. Now, because those go in opposite directions, so to speak, we say that they are inversely proportional to each other. The area and the resistance are inversely proportional. And we can write that down as the resistance is inversely proportional to the area, because as we increase the area, the value in the denominator gets bigger, then the result is going to get smaller here, the result being the resistance. Now, let's see if we can use this information to come up with an equation for the resistance. We can say that the resistance is equal to, now because the length is directly proportional and the, resist, and the area is inversely proportional to the resistance, we can say that the resistance would be equal to L divided by A, and that's the length divided by the cross-sectional area. Now, there's one other thing, one other factor we haven't actually considered, and that is the material that the wire is made of. Each wire has a different value, which we call the resistivity, and the resistivity is represented by the symbol rho. Okay, this is a constant of proportionality. It is called the resistivity, and every material, kind of like density, has a different resistivity. Some have higher resistivities, which means they have higher resistances. Some have lower resistivities, which means they have lower resistances. Okay, so here is the equation that we have for calculating the resistance. This is how we calculate the resistance of a conductor. And I just want to point out once again that rho is the resistivity, and the resistivity can kind of be defined as it describes how strongly a material resists the flow of electric current. Different materials have different resistivities. For example, copper has a resistivity of 1.68 times 10 to the minus 8. Most conductors have low resistivities, 10 to the minus 8, 10 to the minus 7, so to speak. Aluminum has a little higher resistivity. 
2.65 times 10 to the minus 8. Now, most of the wiring that's in your residential houses is made of copper because copper is relatively inexpensive and also doesn't corrode. Aluminum could also be used, and sometimes it's used for high voltage lines, which are bigger because aluminum has a lower density, but also aluminum corrodes a little bit more easily than copper. Now, you could also use gold. Gold has a relatively low resistivity, but gold is expensive, although there are applications in electronics where gold is used. Now, those are all conductors because they have relatively low resistivities. There are also semiconductors and insulators. For example, silicon has a relatively high resistivity, 2.50 times 10 to the second, or 250, and that means that it would offer a significantly greater resistance to the flow of electric current. Okay, so now that's kind of an explanation of resistivity and resistance. And now I'd like to go over a simple calculation that we're going to do for calculating the resistivity of a piece of wire. Before I do that, I just want to summarize and say that this is our equation for the resistance is R is the resistance that's measured in ohms. Rho is the resistivity and in ohm meters. That's the units for the resistivity. L is the length. The length must be in meters. And the area A is for the area. The area must be measured in square meters. And oftentimes you'll have to convert. As you can see from this example, we're going to have to convert the diameter to the area from millimeters to meters squared. Okay, so here we have a simple problem. We have our equation for the resistance. And it says here that the res what is the resistance of a copper wire that is 3.5 meters long and has a diameter of 2 millimeters. Now, oftentimes when we talk about wire, we talk about the diameter of the wire. We don't talk about the area, but we have to convert that into area in meters squared because for the resistance, we have to take into consideration the cross-sectional area of the wire. The copper has a resistivity of 1.68 times 10 to the minus 8 ohm meters. And we're going to kind of plug those values into our equation. The resistance of that wire is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 8 ohm meters. And then we're going to multiply that by the length and divide by the cross-sectional area. The length is given in meters, 3.5 meters. And this is the area. The area is pi r squared because a wire typically has a circular cross-sectional area. The area of a circular of a circular. The area of a circle is pi r squared. So here's pi r squared. Okay? And pi is just pi, 3.14159. And then this is the radius. Now here we're given the diameter is 2 millimeters. The radius is half of the diameter and half of 2 is 1. This is millimeters. We need to have it in meters squared. So millimeter is a thousandth of a meter. So therefore, we can just say that that's 1 times 10 to the minus 3 meters, and we got to square that. So this is pi r squared. Okay? Now, we can just simply plug those values into our equation or into our calculator, and we get that the resistance of that wire would be 0 0.0187 ohms, or we could write that as the resistance is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 2 ohms. Okay, so there you go. We went over an explanation for resistance and resistivity, and we also went over right here a simple problem where we used our equation to calculate the resistance of a piece of wire that's 3 meters long and has a diameter of 2 millimeters, given that the resistivity of copper is 1.68 times 10 to the minus 8 ohm meters. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Give me a thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them just how much you care. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.